Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAVS. And in this lesson, I'm going to be talking about viewing 2D results in RAS Mapper. So what you see on the screen here is a page from the HECRAVS 2D user's manual. It is viewing the 2D or 1D and 2D results in RAS Mapper. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this page in the description of the video. After running a 2D model or a 1D and 2D model combined, you may want to view results, which happens in RAS Mapper. Now I've already covered a number of the results options. If you run a simulation and then go up to view, these results tables are already covered in my video lessons 31, 32, and 33. Let me go ahead and get the full screen up here. So there's a, an hour of video right there describing 1D results, which are still valid and cover these topics right here. But transitioning over into 2D flow and RAS Mapper, that's what we're talking about here. After a plan is run, you're going you're gonna to see a results layer over here underneath results. So currently I have a results for a plan called base and then base 2S. What you're seeing here isn't the name of the plan. This is the short ID. So I already went ahead and created a plan and short ID called base 2S and then went ahead and ran that. Okay, so that ran. Let me go ahead and uh, go back to RAS Mapper. I need to toggle on the terrain and let me also toggle on the geometry. Okay, there's a few layers missing. So here's the river. We have the flow area and boundary conditions. All right, so this is just the main geometry. If I wanted to actually view the results, let's go ahead and collapse geometry, go down to base 2S. I'm gonna go ahead and check that on. And then now we have a number of layers here. I'm going to toggle off the terrain layer just because it's a, it's going to be a little busy. Plus, my results are going to have colors as well. So I don't want that to be confusing when looking at the map. In fact, I'm also going to turn off the 2D flow area. So within geometry, 2D flow area. All right, so here is the river reach. All right, what we have under results are event conditions, geometry, plan, and then three separate layers of parameter data, which is depth, velocity, and water surface elevation. The depth, I'll go ahead and toggle that on. What you see here is a blue swath that goes through the river reach. This happens to be the maximum depth because it says depth max. But if I wanted to change this to min, I would just go ahead and click on the layer and then click min right here. This blue line right here is not the results. This uh, solid royal blue line is actually the geometry river center line. Okay, so maybe I should toggle that one off as well. And that's off. Okay, there we go. So I have the depth min. This simulation just increases the flow rate from 1,000 up to 20,000 CFS in my channel here that I've already defined. So let's go ahead and leave that at max. Then uh, after depth, I have velocity. So we see the different velocity. This is max velocity. And then the last layer here that's been created for me when I ran the simulation it, by default is the water surface elevation. For whatever layer I have selected here, the coloring here that's uh, been selected also corresponds to the legend. So you can see the water surface elevation range here is from about 40 up to about 60. At least that's the range. It looks like the actual colors range from about 60 down to 52, more or less. And if you notice that my cursor on the screen, as I mouse over that color layer, it gives me the actual value. So in this case, it's water surface elevation. But if I turn on velocity, then let's see. Oh, I have to also select that velocity layer. There we go. Here is the velocity of uh, maximum velocity, that is. Minimum velocity would be whatever this is. Okay. Minimum velocity. Another way to view these results graphically, let's go ahead and toggle on depth. Instead of looking at the max or the min, that corresponds to the maximum value or the minimum value over the course of the entire simulation. But if I wanted to look at the entire simulation, all the different time steps, I can use these controls up here in RAS Mapper, and I need to make the window a little bit wider. Okay, there we go. So this is actually a play bar here. I'm gonna go ahead and reset it. And as you notice that the flow rate just ramps up. So let's go ahead and play. All right, so there's the simulation for depth. And then if I did the same thing for velocity, let's go ahead and play that. There's the velocity. I have a second plan right here called base, but this only increases the flow rate from 1,000 up to 2,000, whereas base two is from 1,000 up to 20,000. So we can toggle on the same layers here. Let's see. So this is base one, 
and I have the exact same values here, just a little bit less exciting because it's lower flow that doesn't change as much. If I wanted to reorder the plans, I could just click on a plan and then move a layer either to the top or the bottom or up or down one. So that's true not only for the specific plan, but also for individual layers within the plan. I can go ahead and move the depth down one, and now velocity is above the depth. If I go ahead and click on the base two plan and then right click, I have a number of different options here. So the one I really want to focus on is creating a new results map layer. I'm going to go ahead and do that after dis discussing some of the um, previous options in this context menu. For instance, RAS results information. This gives me information about the simulation. So you're seeing the different files, like the different plan names, the geometry file, the flow file, the simulation information like start and end date time and time interval. Uh, next one down is plotting the results profile. So what we see here is uh, the water surface profile, which is not unlike what we could view up here in water sur surface profiles. Okay, so a little bit of overlap, that's fine. Let's see, next we have show the results table. These are the different cross sections that I have in my reach. After that, it's zoom to layer. So uh, let's see, that centers the particular layer in my zoom window. That's fine. After that, we can remove the layer that's referring to the entire plan. Remove the layer plus the source files. We've already seen move layer in action. Open folder in a uh, separate uh, window. So this just opens up my project directory. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then after that, we have show computation messages. So there was no errors when the computation ran. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the create new results map layer. This gives a whole dialog box for us to create a new results layer. I can also get to this particular dialog box if I go to RAS Mapper, Project, Manage Results Maps. And then what I have here is my plan for base two and then my plan for base. If I click on base two, for instance, and then this button over to the right, add new map, here is that same dialog box that we saw before. All right, so this dialog box has three parts. We'll call it left, center, and right. The left is where I select the parameter that I want to create. So under the hydraulics menu, I probably have about 20 different options. The first three we already have seen, which is water surface elevation, velocity, and oh, depth. I guess it's not the first three, but one, two, and five. So those three parameters have already been created for us automatically. Close, close, which is right here, velocity, depth, and water surface elevation. So let, let me go ahead and open that up again. Right click, um, create new results map. All right, so back to hydraulics. We could also do flow, inundation boundary, current number, depth times velocity, depth times velocity squared. You can read them all yourselves. After that, it's energy based on depth or elevation. I'll go ahead and say, uh, let's go with depth, which means it's going to be the, the depth of the water plus the velocity head. In the middle section, we need to describe the profile. So maximum would be the maximum value regardless of the time step, of course, across the entire simulation. Minimum would be the minimum, irrespective of the specific time step. And then profile would be an individual profile or time step within that simulation. So this simulation I ran was 24 hours with a one hour time step for the output data, as you see. For some of these parameters, we have to specify not the time step, but some other data. So let's see, for instance, arrival time. If I go to the uh, page for adding results map layer for visualization and then scroll down, I believe there's a table here. Yeah, so it gives you a definition of what each of these individual map types represent. Depth, water surface elevation, velocity. Some of these are pretty straightforward, but the one I was looking at, arrival time, this is the computed time in either hours or days from a specified time in the simulation when the water depth reaches a specified inundation depth or threshold. The user may specify the time and units, start time, and depth threshold. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Arrival time right here. Say, for instance, I want to know the arrival time from the start of the simulation. So I'll click start of simulation. But if for some reason I had an offset time, I could set that start time at a different day, minute, hour. And then the last option is to actually specify the date time in this format, in this field right here. After that, I'll specify the... Um, unsteady flow profile is either going to be in hours 
or in days. And then the, the threshold depth right here, if left blank, that will be zero. But if I don't consider it arrival until one foot of depth or two foot of depth or something, I'd go ahead and type that depth. I believe it's in units of feet in this field right here. So just keep that in mind based on the parameter that you choose over here in the left panel. You may be expected to specify a max min or profile, or in other cases, you may be expected to input the, the data here that represents your start time, your profile, and the parameter threshold. So anyway, we sometimes have static maps and dynamic maps. These are the two different uh, output map types. I'm going to go back to my example of energy. So I'll go energy based on depth, and then I'll select, let's go with profile at three hours. This is a scroll bar, by the way, if it wasn't obvious. So at three hours into the simulation, I want to calculate the energy depth at all locations, and I want this to be a raster. So this is um, saved to disk. Static maps, or what are called stored maps right here, are used for other programs. You can save it to a file and then use it for heck FIA, the flood impact analysis or some GIS mapping tools. But then dynamically generated layers like the one up here are better for visualizing and anim animating results in the RAS mapper interface. They're also built in the current view. They're not actually saved. So just keep that distinction in mind. Let's go ahead and just finish this example here with energy. At three hours into the simulation, based on my terrain file, I'll go ahead and click Add Map. And what it says in green here is that successfully added one map. So I'll go ahead and click Close. Let's check that out. We now have this energy map that's showing up. And let's see if I toggle that off and then on. OK, I'm not seeing it yet, but the label says doesn't exist over there. See, hold on. If I click on this, it says the file name and then doesn't exist. What I've realized I need to do in this situation is go right click and then compute slash update stored map, map not created. So once I do that, it takes a moment to generate. All right, stored map has been created. I'll click OK. And then there we go. Here's the, the green coloration that depicts my energy. So if I just hover over, I can see the energy. And this is the total head based on the depth or based on the invert of the channel at that location. So it's it basically the same thing as the depth because the water is not uh, moving that fast i don't believe give me a second yeah so our our water is moving fairly slowly the last cross section is registering at five feet per second but i may want to check that out okay it looks like the area uh, dropped down quite a bit but anyway fairly slow moving water not a large energy contribution from the velocity head parameter if you don't like this coloration that's fine you can go ahead and double click to open up the visualization and information tab and modify what that raster looks like you can also go right click and layer properties. It brings you to the same information. I'm going to go ahead and do a different example now. So let's go up to the geometry, create a new results map layer. I'm going to open up hydraulics. There's also a couple parameters in this additional 2D variables, but hydraulics has the most parameters. Let's check out current number right now. And then let's uh, go with a dynamic map this time. So I'm going to select this uh, radio button here up in generate current view in memory. So I'm going to go ahead and click add map. It tells me that I have successfully created a map. So I'll click close. Now let me toggle off the energy. And now here is my current. Since this is dynamic, I should now be able to play the different time steps as that flow rate increases from 1000 up to 20,000. So let me go ahead, go ahead and roll it back, press the play button, and then watch the, the colors change. With current selected, I could go ahead and hover over these values. And it looks like we have some very large current values. So I am de using diffusion wave equation set, but even values as high as 2.4 are not great. I may want to decrease my time step to, inc to decrease the current number. So instead of values of two here, I can get it below one if I change my computation time step from say one minute down to 15 seconds. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just make that change and then save the plan. I'm going to just use the same base2 or base2s short ID plan. Click Compute. OK, that finished up. 38 seconds, not bad. I'll click Close and then close this. I'm back at RAS Mapper. Now what I've done is I've moved the play bar back to the start. And as you um, may already notice, the colors aren't red anymore. They should all be below 1. 
So the last time step is the most critical with the highest flow and highest velocities and highest current number. And if I uh, just mouse over, I can now see that my current values are all less than one. The user's manual mentions that when generating these maps, they are only you're only seeing the full detail if you actually zoom in all the way to the individual cell level. So as you notice, as you zoom in, it the rendering increases, it enhances. However, if I zoom out, what uh, RASMapper is doing is it's going to be averaging cells that are adjacent to each other to create a faster rendering viewing process, although the actual values may be less precise and, like I said, average based on some adjacent cells. So I have my current number layer right here. And then if I click on that layer, I already mentioned layer properties, editing map parameters. This is a way to modify our layer that we just created. Go ahead and cancel that. All right, next down is zoom to layer. So that'll take us to the layer. Add watch value to the to layer values. After that, we have remove layer, move layer. If we wanted to go up or down, we saw that. Export layer. Now in export layer, I can actually export this to a raster, as you see, or contour lines. Let's go ahead and export it to a raster. What it's going to do is within my project directory, oops, here's my project directory. Here's the name of the plan. And then after that, it's going to save this .vrt file, which represents the current value on the map. All right, so the other parameters I need to specify here is cell size. So if I do something like 100 cell size, I believe that's the cell size I'm using for my 2D flow area. And then original extent, that's fine. And I'll go ahead and click OK. All right, so that's been saved. If I open up my project directory now, and then uh, here's my project directory, I click on the plan, uh, short ID, which is base 2S. Now I should have my TIFF file here for that current layer right here. So this is just a single static file. It looks like it took it for, from the beginning of the simulation. Oh, no, I'm sorry, the, the very end of the simulation. This is January 2. And I should be able to bring this TIFF file into another program, such as a, a GIS mapping program like QGIS, which I have here. Let's go ahead and just see if that works. OK. All right. And, and here are my values. So if I go ahead and click on the identify tool, I can actually see the values. So 0 0.72, 0 0.44. Looks like the lighter color is the higher the value, 0 0.31, 0 0.28, 0 0.32. So those values should be similar to what we remember seeing over in this view right here. Another option is to export contours. So if I right click and then export layer as contour lines, I can specify the contour interval right here. Also the resampling cell size in feet if I want. If I leave this blank, it's just going to use the input, which is 3.3 feet, apparently. So um, let's go ahead and go with the contour of uh, how about 0 0.5 feet. I'm not really sure what to expect. And this is only going to be for the area covered up by this current number layer. That's going to be saved in the project, in the plan. And then this is the shape file right here. So go ahead and click OK. Let that generate. So that finished up. And then let's see, we should have contours right here. Let me go ahead and toggle off these other layers so we can actually see the contours. Yeah, so I probably should have used a smaller contour interval, but you see that it looks like it's been created successfully. If I open up the project directory, I should now have contour lines, which is this right here. And then I should be able to load that shape file into my GIS as before. Here's the shape file right here. Let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Yeah, so you can kind of see the contour lines in light purple. I could make it bigger and bolder and easier to see, but then here was the first layer that we had for the current number. And then again, here is the contour lines. Well, that's it for this lesson. What we talked about was viewing the 2D results in RAS Mapper. We uh, ran two different plans and then looked at the results for mostly for base two, looked at some of the default layers that were automatically generated. And then we also went to right click, create new RAS map layer and added some of our own uh, map layers to the RAS mapper interface.